God bless you. God bless you. Welcome once again to another message of hope Amen. on this beautiful Sunday morning here in Virginia. And we're Amen. praying for you as we normally do uh, on this beautiful day in April. And we praise God for what he has done for us this past week yes. and what we're looking forward to in the days to come. Today I want to get directly into the message uh, that's titled, uh, The Bomb of Gilead, yeah. The Bomb of Gilead. In Jeremiah chapter 8, mm -hmm. in Jeremiah chapter 8, let me see, <clears throat> amen, amen. Uh, let me see, if I find it. Yeah, Jeremiah chapter 8. <clears throat> Amen. Verse 22, there is a question yeah. that's raised. All right. And it's a very powerful question. Well, mm -hmm. Is there no bomb in Gilead? Yes, Lord. Is there no physician there? Mm -hmm. Why then is there no recovery for the health of the daughter of my people. Is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is there no recovery for the health of the daughter of my people? The bomb in Gilead. God gave Judah just like he, he has given us All right. yes. every opportunity to repent. That's right. mm -hmm. But she continued to rebel. My God. As uh, it says in the fourth verse, uh, it referred to as a perpetual backslide. Mm -hmm. In Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 20, it records the mournful, mournful cry of those who learn the consequences of sin too late. Mm -hmm. The harvest, representing God's opportunity to repent, yeah. was passed. Yeah. By not taking advantage of God's provision for deliverance from judgment when it had been available, the people were now without hope. Mm -hmm. For they testified of their own Selves uh, in that verse 20, we are not saved. Mm -hmm. The weeping prophet Jeremiah proposes a, a perpetual and endless flow of tears from people of, for the people of God, and with his weeping comes confusion. Yeah. Yeah. Jeremiah is a, a jumble of conflicting emotions and contradictory ideas. Right. Consider what the prophet says about his relationship with God. He, he has the strongest possible sense of God's presence. Yes. For he spoke to him directly as a friend to friend. Yes. For in uh, the 8th chapter verse 18 he used these words, Oh my comforter, in sorrow, my heart is faint within me. Yeah, yeah. But by the time he gets to the middle of the next verse, he, he starts to doubt whether God is really, amen, uh, for his people at all. Well, mm -hmm. For in verse 19, the B clause, he says, Is the Lord not in Zion? Well, yes. Is her king no longer there? And in Psalm 132, verse 13, God is supposed to be in Zion because he had chosen Zion for his dwelling place. But the question is, where is he? God does not seem to be at home in this text. He, in his grief, Jeremiah is at once close to God and yet, on the other hand, is far away from God. He sensed both the presence and the absence of God, if you please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Present and absent yeah, yeah. at the same time. 
And so Jeremiah's confusion about his own relationship to God was mirrored by his paradoxical relationship to God's people. He announced his absolute solidarity with them in verse 21. Since my people are crushed, then I'm crushed. I moan and and horror grips me. He, he, he's in the same sorrow they in. Yeah. The prophet identified so strongly with the people of God that, that, and that their suffering became his suffering. Yeah. And Jeremiah seems not to want to stay with the people of God after all. He, he wants to purchase his own little private heartbreak hotel. A result property in the desert far away from his people and their problems. And there are those of us who, who, amen, if you've been in sorrow land so long, you want to get away from sorrow. And Jeremiah was like that. But, but did Jeremiah love God's people or did he hate them? That's a good question. Is God present or is God absent? Those are the questions that we ask ourselves also. Yeah. It is all very confusing but, fusing, but it's not surprising because these confusions and contradictions reminds us that the Jeremiah wrote from the very depths of despair. Oh, yeah. Despair troubles the soul and confuses the mind. For in his grief, Jeremiah was not always sure what he thought or how he felt. Yeah. Amen. I want, to, I want to draw you close as we look at, at why he raised these questions. Amen. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? And then he said, why then is there no recovery? For the people... For the health of the daughter of my people. Three questions. Why, why did it raise this? Number one, that the decay of truth that take place in the text. Yes. What plunged Jeremiah into such perplexities of despair, there were two reasons for his sorrow. Well. The first was that the people of God were no longer people of truth. Come on now, come on, come on. Why? Because lying and deceit are, are mentioned repeatedly in these verses. Jeremiah's people were, were not true in their personal relationships to each other and to God. In Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 2, they, they were a crowd of unfaithful people. Amen. In verse 8, to be closed in the ninth chapter, with his mouth, each cord speaks cordially uh, to his neighbor, but his heart, yeah. he sets a trap for them. Yeah. English Standard Version says, with his mouth, each speaks peace to his neighbor, yeah. but in his heart, he plans an ambush for him. Yeah. Sounds much like today yeah. right. in which we live in. In other words, people were polite, yes. but they were not truthful. Yes. Come on, y'all help me here. That person used this tongue as, a, as an archer would use a bow. It became a weapon to shoot lies. So the question is, how do you use your, your tongue? Honesty was not being practiced by those living in Judah. Y'all can say amen. One had to watch his friends and, and, and no one could trust his brother. It's bad when you, when you can't trust your friends and you got to watch your brother. Come on, help me here. And the very fabric of a society unraveled. No one would speak the truth. That's Jeremiah's day. But it's still our day also. Jeremiah lived in a nation that were full of deception yes. and refused to acknowledge God. Yes. Now let me help you here. Anytime 
that deception and lies. Help me somebody. It is refusal to acknowledge God. Come on, help me. That relationship with him was false. They worship many gods rather than one true God. Verse 3, amen. Verse 3, verse 3. They go from one sin to the another. They do not acknowledge me. Now, now the Bible in basic English put it this way. They go on from evil to evil. And they have no knowledge of me and save the Lord. But then in verse 6, you live in the midst of deception. In their deceit, they refuse to acknowledge me. Now, now this is the biggest lie of all. The lie that God does not exist. Oh, I, I, I feel good. Y'all help me. Now, now, look at this. The people of Jerusalem did not praise God for his majesty. They, 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 thank, they did not thank him for his mercy. Oh, they did not ask him for his forgiveness. I say that again. They, they did not praise God for his majesty. They did not thank him for his mercy. And they did not ask him for forgiveness. Their silence was the denial of God's existence, which is the mother of all lies. Are y'all going to help me here? Brothers and sisters were betraying one another. Oh, that's a dark age. That's a dark age. Did y'all hear me? Not, 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 not cousins, but brothers and sisters were betraying one another. Every personal relationship, every spiritual relationship, every family relationship was corrupted by untruth. That's in this 7th and 8th chapter. Are y'all with me here? I think I better say it again. I, yeah. I said brothers and sisters yeah. were betraying one another. Uh -huh. Every personal relationship, every spiritual relationship, yeah. every family relationship yeah. was corrupted by untruth. Yeah. That sounds like the day in which we're living. Come on, say amen. Yeah. Thus Jeremiah repeatedly described the tongue as a Weapon. Yes, they even took their tongue to boot camp, yes. training them for verbal combat. Yes. Help me, somebody. Yes. I said verbal combat. For in verse 5, they have taught their tongues to lie. Uh -huh. Say verbal combat. Verbal combat. The Bible in basic English says it this way the tongues have been trained to say false words. Yes. They twist, yes. hating to come back. Yes. And then the message translation say, never telling the truth. Yes. They train their tongues. Yes. And then verse 6 say, they pile wrong upon wrong. Yes. Stack lie upon lie. They refuse to know me. Yes. Help me somebody. There's another reason Jeremiah grieved for the people of God. He grieved because he knew God would judge them for their sins. Help me somebody. Judgment was inevitable because they did not speak the truth. They, they would have to bear the consequences. Now, if there's any hope for the people of Judah, is there any chance that they would escape the divine judgment. The futility of that situation is summarized in the one saddest verse in the Old Testament. The harvest is past. The summer is ending. And we are not saved. Help me somebody. First, I said, to answer this question, is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no position there? Why then is there no covering for the health of the daughter of my people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Uh, uh, and dealt with the, the whole issue here 
Amen. Number one, number one, the decay of truth. Yes, Secondly, amen, the true lies. Woo. What is the true lies here? Yeah. The harvest is past. Yes, the summer is ending. Yes, and we are not saved. Yes, Help me somebody. Yes, they were trying to cover this thing up here. Yes, Everything Jeremiah says about his culture is true in this post-Christian time. Yes, God. Yes, God. Oh, y'all will help me here. Yes, Jeremiah lived in a cultural deception. So do we. Yes. Yes. We are not saved. Yes. Hey, Amen. We, we live on this side of the cross. Yes. And we're still not saved. Yes. Hey, Amen. We, we still act the same way. Come on, help me up in here. <coughs> Jeremiah, we've lost this wisdom to know where the truth is yes. and where falsehood begins. Yes. Say amen. Yes. Why? Because it's a hereditary disease. Woo. It's a pervading disease. The Bible says in, in Isaiah, the whole head is sick. Yes. Whole heart is faint. Yes. It's a Deceitful disease. It's a moral, moral disease. But the question is there. No bomb in Gilead. Is there no physician there? No physician qualified to apply the remedy. Yeah, that raises a question. He first want to know is there any medicine? Is there a doctor? That's qualified. So the third thing there, amen, is there no medicine there? Is there no physician? If so, why then? <laughs> is there no recovery for the health of the daughter of my people? So the third thing is, uh, let's look closer at the balm of Gilead. The balm tree is what he's talking about here. The balm tree weeps out a kind of gum like tears. Help me somebody. Similar, like Christ wept not only tears for Jerusalem, but blood for the world. The blossom tree being wounded and struck too deep it dies. Say amen. But when the blossom uh, tree is cut, they used to set a, bay, a bucket under it. To receive the juice or the sap when the word is divided by preaching, the people should come to church with a pail ready. Yes, That's what they feel me. Yes, with some of that saving bomb. Yes, How many sermons are lost while you bring nothing with you? Y'all not paying here. Not even paying attention to what even being said. Bomb is good against all diseases. It's a pantry of wholesome food. Yes. A physician's shop of antidotes. A, a pandemic of profitable laws. A, a treasure of costly jewels. But look at verse 22b. Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? Is there no bond in Gilead? Is there no physician there? The case is desperate. Must the patient die of disease? Yes, Must the poor sinner seek under his sins? Is there no hope for him? Say that he has wandered far from God. Forgotten and neglected. Repaid all his favor. With baseless requited all his bounties and uh, messes with carnality and folly. Yeah. Is there no remedy? Yeah. Must he perish under the load of iniquity and crime? Yeah. Is there no bomb in Gilead? Yeah. Is the supply exhausted uh, or has it value ceased? Is there yeah. no bomb in Gilead? Although the people spiritual sickness was still deep, well, it could be healed. Yeah. 
I wish I had somebody help me. But the people refused the medicine. Somebody said it here this morning, refused the medicine. God could heal the self-inflicted wounds. But he would not force his healing on them. But I got close. Let me talk about Gilead a minute. Gilead was a country beyond the Jordan in which a certain tree grew a value and rarity. And from the trunk and branches of which they steal this gum said to be of sovereign use in healing wounds. Don't have a witness. But the prophet viewing uh, uh, on one hand Zion's desperate case. On the other hand, God's uh, own appointed remedy. Ask the, this pregnant question. Is there no bomb in Gilead? But I stopped by to tell somebody God has provided a remedy. For them more in the bomb to heal then there is guilt to the wound. For well, there's more grace to save than there is sin to destroy. But why then is she so sick and sore? Why so bleeding to death? Why do her head so droop down and her hands are hanging down? And her knees are, are so weak. Why is her face so pale? And her frame so wasted? And her constitution so broken? Why is the not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? The people refused. Uh, yeah. To go to the doctor. Don't have a witness here. They were sick and suffering, but they would not go to the doctor. They were sick, but they wouldn't take the medicine. They'll have a witness here. <laughs> Come on, say amen. Spiritually speaking, uh, they were more than the disease. Huh? They sinned against God. Huh? But is there no bomb in Gilead? Say amen. Is there any remedy there? Uh, is there no position there? Uh, we need a position. Uh, we need a position uh, who knows our sick remedy, who's acquainted with our heart disease uh, and our head disease, uh, who sees our backsliding uh, in our lips uh, and our misgivings, uh, our doubts, uh, our coldness. Uh, and our deadness, huh? yeah, uh, and our helplessness, huh? and our inability. Uh, we need uh, a physician uh, who can help in our hearts huh? and in our motives. Huh? But the prophet needed uh, some medical supplies. Huh? Come on, help me, somebody. Huh? Yeah, huh? he went to the pharmacy. Uh, discovered the pharmacies uh, were out of the bomb of Gilead. Uh, he asked if there was uh, a doctor in the house. Uh, is there a doctor in the house? Uh, and there was no answer. Uh, say yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the illness uh, would be terminal. Uh, but is there no bomb in Gilead? Uh, but Jeremiah uh, would find no bomb. Uh, in Gilead, not for the wound, uh, as examined the vital signs, uh, say yeah, he realized, uh, yes sir, do nothing uh, to bring them back to spiritual health. Uh, there was no medicine uh, to kill them, uh, no doctor to heal them. Uh, the people of God uh, needed salvation, uh, say yes. Uh, when the people of Judah needed was someone who could heal all their diseases, they needed a great physician. Say yeah, say yeah, more 
them there. They needed somebody that the great physician said, yeah, Jesus Christ, the bomb in Gilead. Do you know him? Don't y'all fool me. Do you know him? Jesus, the bomb in Gilead. He is the one who's the dawn in authority, girded in grace, mantled in majesty, robed in righteousness, vested in virtue. He's the one who's glorious in grace, judicial, yes sir, in justice, kind, yes sir, in kingliness, limitless, in lordship, matchless, in might, precious, yeah, in peace, preeminent, in power, repentant, in his renown, righteous, in reign, sufficient in salvation, sure, in his support, he is the beginning, of the beginning, he's the uncaused, yes sir, cause of the cause, he's the one who spoke and was done, commanded, and it stood still, Jesus, the bomb in Gilead, what can he do? He can heal your body. He can lead you to life. He can make you whole. He can restore your soul. He can unburden your heart. He can regulate your mind. He can liberate your spirit. He can set you free. He can forgive your sins. What can he do? He can deliver you from distress. Yeah. He can rescue the perishing. He can care for the dying. He can give you new life. He can give you new heart. A new spirit. And a new mind. Jesus. Rachel. In the bottom in Gilead. His character is irreproachable. His love is unlimited. His righteousness is untarnished. His grace is sufficient. His promises are sure. His mercy is new every morning. His faithfulness reaches unto the clouds. Jesus, Rachel, in the bomb in Gilead, he's the same. Yeah, in his faithfulness, in his effectiveness, he's the same. In the justice, he's the same. In forgiveness, in intolerance, Jesus, don't y'all play with me. He's the bomb in Gilead, he's the same. In his understanding, he's the same. In his demand, in his command, in his reprimanding, in his unwavering, in his watchfulness, he's the same. In his waiting, in his rebuking, and finally, he's the great I am of eternity, God's only son. He's the first begotten from the dead. Jesus, uh, bottom of Gilead, uh, say yeah, say yeah, uh, but one more thing, uh, is there uh, no bomb in Gilead, uh, but on a mountain uh, of Gilead, uh, there was uh, another tree, uh, say yeah, uh, say yeah, uh, a tree called uh, Calvary, uh, hung on that tree, uh, what Jesus and from his side came another bomb his blood say yeah he blood and somebody said that's power in the blood say yeah he is he is the bomb that's power in the blood say yeah yeah Come on, praise him. Come on, praise him.
Come on, all on how to praise him. Lift your hands and praise him. Come on 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 and praise him. Praise him. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on. Yes, Lord. Wherever you are, just say that. Come on. Yes, Lord. We'll make our own music. Come on, come on. Yes, Lord. Come on, just say that. Yes, Lord. 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 You know why I can say yes, Lord? He's saved. He saved my soul. He saved my soul. What about you? He saved my soul. He saved my soul. What about you? He saved my soul. He saved. Lift your voice and lift your voice and lift your voices. He saved my soul. God, know next Sunday is going to be a time. It's going to be a time next Thank Sunday. You, Thank you, Lord. Come on, everybody. Thank you, Lord. It's going to be a time next Sunday. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Whoa. He's been so good. He's been so good. He's been so good. Can you say he's been good? Can you say he's been good, Rachel? He's been so what about it, CC? He had to be good. What about it, Shirley? What about it? What about it? Had to be good to you. So good. He's been so good. I'm over in the latter years, but he's been good to me. Yes, yes. Come on, one more time. He's been good. He's so good. So good. So good. Woo! Come on, just hum it, just hum it, just hum it, just hum it, just hum it. We have a time up in here. We have a time up in here. But next Sunday, God knows, God knows we're going to have an awesome time. Lord, I thank you for Jesus. I thank you for providing a physician who's qualified. To heal us of all of our conditions, our sins, sick souls, and our, our spiritual issues and our physical issues. I thank you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for writing the prescription. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for forgiving us of our sins and give us another opportunity. And I pray, Lord, that you would touch person's hearts all over this world. We 
getting, some are getting weary because of COVID, but COVID is a liar from the pits of hell. We walk in life, except nothing else, in the name of Jesus. Lord, in the name of Jesus, remember those who, who each week ask to come to the country. Lord, we want to go so bad to be able to do, conduct these campaigns, souls will be saved, and, and the party help with schools, and, and to help make lives better. But Lord, we trust in you to open doors for it to happen. Yeah. And we speak nothing but life right now yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. We believe better days are coming. Yes. We thank you for this text. Yes. We thank you for thank you. For you, Lord, in the yes, name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you, Jesus. God bless. God bless. Yes, Lord. God bless. I'll see you Tuesday night in our Bible study. And then next Sunday, the same time.